Alright, so today's tutorial is about adding these um, decorations to um, boxes, so in this case they're images where we've got a top left here, we've got some concentric circles that are overlapping the image and the bottom right we've got the same image which is going behind the image uh, and this is just a duplication of that, just showing it used in different places and this is the same technique used on a text box. Um, so what I want to show you is how to do this with bricks using the bricks class system. It's pretty cool. So I'm going to start from scratch. I'm going to delete everything I've got here. So I'm going to edit this with bricks. And basically I'm going to clear this page. Okay, so we have nothing on the page. It's going to add a section and in that section I'm just going to go through and clear out the classes that I created so I'm going to redo this for you. All right. So we've now got a just a standard blank page with a single section single container. So the first thing I'm going to do is add a div to that container and on that container I'm going to, I'm sorry on that div not highlighting properly here. On that div, uh, I'm going to just give this a name for the moment. I'll call that the decoration box. Okay, so we've got a decoration box here, and I'm going to give this a BEM block name of decoration. Decoration box, okay? Not decoration, decoration. Ugh. The indicator so creates that class, and the only thing I want to set on here for the moment, going to, there's another setting I'm going to set uh, a little bit later to show you an effect of it, uh, but the only thing I'm going to set on this is under my layout, I'm going to set my position to relative so that the decorations that I put inside are going to be relative to that box. And inside that box, I'm just going to chuck an image in there. Okay, and I'm just going to select one of my images that are in here. So I'll select that one, for example. And we only want it to be small, so maybe this here, 300 by 200. All right, so we've got an image in a box. Actually, I might just center that container there so we can actually see this a little bit better. So there we go, centering the items in that container. So our decoration box has got a single class, which is basically got the position set to relative. All right, now we need to create a couple more things. And I'm going to call the first one decoration box and BEM elements, so two underscores. And I'm going to call this before. And there's a reason I give it that naming. Uh, and that is so we want to target a before pseudo element. By giving it the name before, it's a really simple clue that I need to use my before pseudo element. Now, the before and after aren't here by default. If they're not, um, you just type the colon before and press enter and it'll create that for you. Okay, so now one of the little things that I notice with Bricks is sometimes when you do that, so you've got a before uh, highlighted, but it hasn't got this highlighted anymore. It's actually deselected this class. So we're going to make sure both the element that you want to target and the before pseudo element are selected in here. We're going to use a background, so for that to display, we've got to have something in the content. So we're just going to put a space in there. Very important, if you don't have the space, it will not display. Okay, in the style, I'm going to pick a background of, I've just got these concentric circles here. It's just an SVG I exported out of Figma. Insert that. Okay, now it's still not displaying, obviously. So under our layout, we want to set our width to say 150 pixels, our height to 150 pixels, and we want to set the position to absolute, and we want to go half that back and half the top, so uh, I'm going to go minus 75 px, and uh, from the left, minus 75 px. So we can see here, We've got a black SVG and a dark gray background, so we can only just see it overlapping this image. 
So here's where the uh, CSS for um, for filters it comes in handy. So if we go into our CSS filters and we use our invert, we're going to invert it all the way to white, and then might drop the opacity a little bit so it just looks a bit better. So here's the drop down opacity, so it's sitting on that top left corner and um, it's overlapping that image. All right, now let's create a new pseudo element and we're going to call that after. Okay, and we're going to make sure we've selected our after. And again, once we selected that pseudo selector up here, it deselected this. So we're going to make sure that is both the class and the pseudo selector and pseudo element are both selected. And we're going to do the same thing. We have to have a content, so we put a space there. Now layout, we're 150 pixels uh, by 150 pixels. And we're going to set the position to absolute. And this time we're going to go bottom of minus 75. And the right of minus 75. Okay. And we haven't set the background yet. So let's go to the background. Set the background and pick that same image. And there it is sitting on top there. So let's change the color of that by using our filter. It's going to invert it and uh, maybe we'll just leave that as white. We can change the opacity if we want. And there we go, we've got our before and after. Now, both of these are sitting on top of that image. In my example, I showed that the bottom one was sitting behind the image. So the obvious thing to do for there is to set the Z index to minus, set it to minus one. What you'd notice though is when I put it to minus one, it disappeared altogether because it's disappearing behind the background of that section. So what we need to do is from this decoration box, we have to tell it we want a new stacking order for Z index. So it's from that point onwards is what we're going to be relative to. The way we do that is go back to our decoration box class, not the CSS, so just the decoration box. Um, and there's no UI for this, so we're going to use some CSS and we just set root and we're going to set the isolation to isolate. Okay, what we've done here by targeting the root of the uh, decoration box, which is the container that's containing that image, um, we've told it that the Z index starts from there. So the pseudo element set to negative one is relevant to that box. So that ensures that it doesn't disappear behind any other element. So what that does is it gives us a new stacking order based on this decoration box. So that Z index of negative one is relevant to that box, but not to the uh, document or the container around it. So um, you can set that to negative one million if you want to, and it's still gonna show because it's relevant to that box. That's a really, really cool new thing that they've done in the CSS3. Anyway, so that's our first one done. Now, if I just duplicate this, I'm gonna show you, if I duplicate that entire section, go in there and just change my image to pick another image, maybe this forest here. So we've got a completely different image and it's still working. Now, being BIM class related, if I want to change my after element, again, the after is a clue that we need to make sure we select the after pseudo selector. So the naming I'm using for BEM, if I'm targeting it a before or an after pseudo element, um, I name the element as that. So it's obvious in bricks. Right, now, I might decide I want that to actually be closer in. So now I've got this selected, let's go to our uh, layout and let's say we don't want to be minus 75 we want to be minus say 40 uh, and minus 40 on there so now we've moved that closer in for the uh, after one and you notice it's changed on this one down the bottom as well so that's the beauty of doing this is that you all of these are related back to these classes so let's do a brand new section a brand new section down the bottom here. And what I'm gonna do in that section is add a rich text 
head over to my favorite uh, Bob Ross Laura Mipsum generator here and grab some text and select that and chuck the text into there and now we've got rich text in there let's make it a bit smaller so we'll make the style of that box to a width of say 400 pixels uh, we'll give it some padding say 20 pixel uh, give it a background color oh, maybe the that color there so we've just got something now in that uh, inside that container that we can target so to add all of these decorations all we do is go back to our container decoration whoops that's the pseudo elements not the container uh, go there and it's the decorations so we want the decoration box to set our relative and our isolation isolate and we want the let's say we just want the after we just add the decoration after there it is there because that's not that's a container let me go backwards here let me take that off gotta love demos i'm going to add a div first in there i'm going to put the rich text in the div and then on that div i'm going to add the decoration box of the after okay my mistake so you see that now what's happening is that after is now relevant to the document because i haven't set the other class on here so i'm going to take that off a bit of a trick here to remember with with the with bem is you always want to start with your block so the block in this case gives me my um, relative positioning of that div and it also sets my isolation to isolate now we can add the decoration after and now that after is relevant to that div if we want the before decoration before okay now we've got the before and after on a text box uh, and on images just by adding these three classes so that's pretty much how it works um, you can do so much more with this you can add um, different images um, let me just see what I've got actually in those images if we go back to our after here so I'm going to show one more example of what you can do with this so uh, if we go to this image here what have we got in the images I haven't got one that I can flip around so I might just pause this video here I'm gonna just grab another image okay so I've just grabbed another shape and I'm going to import that into here so I've got some dots there I'm gonna insert that as my image for the before uh, sorry the after I'm gonna to go to the before select my before pseudo selector and I'm going to select the same image so that one there okay now let's say we want that to be rotated actually let's go to that before and our CSS because it's a bit of a different image let's take some of the opacity back give us some more opacity there okay so these are both in exactly the same uh, direction so let's say on the before one we want that rotated all we have to do is go back to our before on our before there our style we we'll go transform and ta -ta -ta, transform here and we're going to rotate around the z of say minus 45 so we'll make it maybe minus 60 degrees uh, 90 maybe so even though these are exactly the same image it looks different because we've rotated this one here and left that one there as its standard rotation so look looking at that I might actually move that a little bit different again so layout instead of being minus 75 we might make back that minus 55 okay and we'll go there 
So I'll move it closer in so it sits on top of the image there. All right, and because we're using these classes again, it's changed everywhere that we've used it. So let's just change that, save that. View that, and there it is. We're using this decorator uh, on all of these images. That could be any element you like. So as long as you put a div there, put the classes on that, put your content inside that div, uh, this will work for you. So let's go back to it with bricks. Do one more thing here. Okay, so I'm going to now change, add a couple of modifiers. So on this box here, I'm going to create a new one, which is my decoration box before. I call this one decoration box before with a modifier, so dash dash circles. Okay, now we've got a modifier of circles. Here's, here's there, it gets really cool. So now we're going to obviously run our before, so we're going to select our before. Uh, make sure we're selecting the circles again. And on this one, what we're going to do is we're going to change our background to be the circles. Okay, now we've got the circles. Um, and we can change the all of the settings here. We can move that. Uh, we can... Da, 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 where are we? The... Uh, da, 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 CSS, CSS filters, opacity, you can drop the opacity on the circles. So maybe it's just on the edge there. Uh, so the invert. Maybe we want it black. Uh, and we want to drop the opacity a bit. All right, so here we go there. Now, if I go down to now this box, so that uh, container there that's got these elements on it, and I add the circles, here's my modifier. I've now got those circles on the top left. So it's really, really simple. Once you understand the BEM naming conventions, you understand the Bricks class system, uh, how to use the pseudo elements and how to use modifiers. Uh, incredibly powerful. Uh, it gives you a simple way of doing this. It gives you a consistent way of doing this and a way that is centralized. So if you make changes, but you might use these uh, decorations in multiple places throughout your site. You decide you want to change the image change the positioning, whatever you want to do, and you find that you just go to one class, change it there, and you've just updated it everywhere. So I think it's a really cool way of doing it. Hope you like this. If you like, please hit the subscribe and the like. Thank you.